Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the novel of Patrick Zuskind called Perfume, the story of the murderer. Initially I learned about the story from the film with the same name that was uh, pretty much an adaptation of the novel of Patrick Zuskind that was uh, aired not so long ago, I think it was made in the late 2000s and um, back in that days that film turned out to be quite a successful venture. At least um, the uniqueness of the story made quite a buzz, especially all this weird borderline fetishist motive of so all the smells and scents that uh, the main protagonist is feeling and the whole story is built around that. I personally had some struggles uh, reading this novel. I acquired the book already over a decade ago. I think at this point, and um, back in the days, I think the English translation of this book was really hard to read, and especially when you're trying to get through all the descriptions of the sense and the feelings that uh, Grinui, the main protagonist, has been experiencing, it was just too dense to go through this text, I don't know. And um, especially the vocabulary that was used by the translator of the book was definitely not the intermediary level one, you know, that's something that I would still um, talk about my vocabulary back in the days. Uh, at least now it became a bit easier to understand anything that was going on in the book, but um, still just the manner in which the whole book was written is still hard to enjoy it properly unless you're really into descriptions and uh, descriptions are really going into the um, deep understanding of the sense all around us, which I think is quite a unique look at how things are being described. Usually we are consuming the world with our visuals, right? We're with our own eyes, so we... I'm not sure how many people are always paying attention to the smells. Of course, right, smells are equally important to any of the senses that we have, but I think most of us still are... Um, first thing we usually would grasp would still be a visual representation um, in this and that way, and this is what we usually memorizing about specific things. So going extra deep into the description of the smells, that was something that um, I believe is unusual for the novel. So let's get a quick rundown on the plot. The story goes around the life of Jean-Baptiste Grenouille, who was born to a poor woman who already gave birth to four, child to four children, who supposedly were all stillborn. Uh, however, it turned out to be that Grenouille wasn't and was saved randomly um, when his mother gave birth to him and was trying to kill because she had no use for children. So she got arrested and uh, killed pretty much for that. So she got arrested and Jean-Baptiste was sorted out a different place. So first of all, he got into the hands of um, Father Terrier, who then assigned a vet nurse to him that was supposed to fit him, uh, as he was still a infant, he had to eat uh, women's milk, so to say, and this is the way that he was supposed to be fed, but already there was something off with this child, everybody was feeling something demonic in him, he didn't have any specific smells, and this is the first thing that the um, wet nurse pointed out, her name was uh, Jeanne Bussy, and she took him for like a week and then she couldn't um, pretty much produce more milk for him, like she couldn't really fill him and he was sort of soaking up her life um, out of her, which was crazy because this were her job and she has been feeding many kids before that. So uh, there was this interesting negotiation when Father Terrier was trying to give her more money and uh, firstly just persuade her to continue feeding the child, but then both of them feeling this 
actually not feeling because the child was orderless. They um, were getting this sinister feeling about him. So there was nothing much they could do, and they ended up giving him to the to the boarding house of Madame Gellard. And Madame Gellard, she she was pretty much in charge of this place. And uh, the good thing for Grenouille, particular sense for her, was that that she couldn't feel any smells anymore because uh, she had some kind of a rupture with her nose, so she kind of lost the sense. And for her, Grenouille was just, uh, you know, just another kid that she supposedly had to take care of. While other kids were still feeling something sinister about him and something bad and something off, and they were even trying to kill him, trying to suffocate him, which uh, didn't turn out to be. So, you know, we sort of... We're sort of looking at the process of bringing up of the main character, and for us, um, at least when he's in his infantry days, you kind of feel... Uh, both sides. I still felt like the childhood times of the Grenouille were still incredibly hard. That is why you sort of feel some kind of a compassion and sympathy towards the child. And, uh, you know, seeing that the life wasn't uh, great to him and uh, people were uh, shocked by his presence and were most of the times feeling something bad about him. We soon then realize that he is also possessing quite a rare gift, gift of sensing every single scent out in the air. And he's been feeling, if, for example, the vegetables already uh, going to be rotten or that uh, almost to the point that, okay, uh, he can smell the breath of a person and understand what they ate for breakfast. Uh, so it was kind of a, a bizarre supernatural uh, power that he possessed, and uh, at the point of a time, he were still trying to figure out on how to use it. And sooner, we then learn after he then worked for Grimal, who was a tenor for some point of a time, uh, he got to know Giuseppe Baldini, who was um, the perfumer. He was uh, creating different scents, and you know, he was already past his peak, and there has been other people who've been taking his place and been one of the most popular perfumers out in Paris. So what happened is that when Grenouille delivered uh, pig skins for, um, you know, perfume purposes, he got a chance to show up his skill to actually deliver the formula of the coveted perfume that was so popular back in the days in Paris. And... Um, Grenouille even went around and created an even better scent that became much more popular, brought so much more money for Giuseppe Baldini, who then wanted to go and retire at some point of a time. Uh, however, uh, the night Grenouille left the place, the house of Baldini just collapsed and he supposedly died in Seine. Grenouille then travels to the south of France, He's been living as a hermit at some point of a time. He got disgusted by the people. And actually, before leaving, first he committed his first murder. Uh, he, he tasted the scent of a young girl who was just hitting her puberty. And um, for him, it turned out to be one of the most angelic scents that he's ever experienced and smelled. So he guided by some kind of a bizarre feeling that he had came to this girl and just strangled her to death and then soaked up all of the smell that he could from her clothes and from herself to the point where she wasn't really producing any smells anymore. And then he left Paris pretty much after that. So then he sort of was growing into more of a disgust. Uh, so, you know, the human race was sort of... Um, having the disgust towards him, he was having disgust towards them. At some point of time, he, you know, he was this creator. He wanted to make this ultimate smell that uh, he sees how much the smells could guide people through through different things. And um, after spending seven years as a hermit in the cave, um, he then reappeared and appeared in front of the Marquis, uh, Marquis de la Tête d'Espinasse, who is actually... Um, was trying to play as a scientist and uh, he uh, came up with a quite a ridiculous 
theory about Grenou, about, you know, who told the story that he was captured in K for seven years, and then he, um, he came up with some fluidal theory that was supposed to, you know, explain what happened to the person and how now he from this savage captive can turn back into the normal human being and he was trying to use Grinu in order to present his crazily stupid theory and uh, win some scientific points in front of the society. However, um, it kind of both did work out and didn't. At the end of the day, Grinu decided to leave. Uh, he continuously grew some more hatred towards the human beings and um, he still felt like he needs to use and make this ultimate scent again. So then he traveled further and he tra traveled further to grass where he ended up on a killing spree. He killed 24 um, young women and he uh, took their hair and their clothes pretty much um, so that he can take their sense in order to create this overwhelmingly powerful one and then we sort of follow the story of um, girl Laura and um, her her father who tried um, sort of to use her as a bait towards the murderer to the serial killer who Grinui turned out to be and um, it all ended up in Grinui actually killing Laura and them um, arresting him for, for doing that. So finally, um, he was supposedly should have been prosecuted. And um, at the same time, in um, at the times when he was working with uh, Marquise um, back on his way to Grasse in Montpellier, he decided to finally bring the smell to him because while living in the cave he also noticed that yes he indeed doesn't have his own smell and because there, there was nothing else for him to smell there were no other people so he actually was also kind of going um crazy about it so then he you know took a bunch of uh interesting combination that he came up with to create a human smell which was uh, something like um uh, dog shit and uh, pieces of mud and some 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 spoiled vegetables as well and it's all combined turned out to be just a normal human smell which actually um, you know turned out to be uh, a little bit funny to me and um, so after doing that he stopped being frowned upon at the society and he stopped being shunned at. so it became much easier for him to win over people and then in grass when he was already when we're, we're about to be put to trial he finished his formula he finished his perfume this ultimate scent that he was supposed to have and after having it he was going for his own execution he wore this smell his the scent and uh, everybody just stopped in a of admiration they've seen him as something angelic and um Laura's father even called him his son and uh, they ended up deciding not to kill him and they put everything, they put Driol, with whom Greenway worked with for Madame Arnulfi. They used that uh, man who then confessed for killing all these women after being tortured for uh, many days that uh, he was the actual doer of it and not Greenway who then escaped, um, escaped all that, and we know, you know, disgust um, to the human being, he then decided to go back to Paris, and um, he pretty much realized that people who historically always frowned at him are now worshipping, and how easily it all can be manipulated, he... Um, Grew his disappointment to to the point that the fact of him being worshipped weren't giving him any more dissatisfaction. So what happened is that he went to the place where um, some beggars and um, rascals were just hanging around, and then he poured the whole flask of the perfume that he've created, um, and it turned out into. Um, him being eaten alive by all these um, beggars who just couldn't uh, 
show their love in in the other way and um, that was actually quite a graphic scene in the whole book that it all ends up like this even though the whole book is uh, sort of playing around with semi supernatural and weirdish feelings and of course um, the book about the serial killer cannot be could be could be gruesome at times and uh, it's a proper end to such a gruesome person as a grenouille that he pretty much got eaten alive and um, people who who did it did it supposedly out of love and admiration I surprisingly was um, getting quite a mixed feelings about the whole book generally plot wise it was interesting I feel like if you get to go through the pages long descriptions of the sense and when sometimes I personally was getting bored of you get to go through quite a decent and interesting plot of something that is much more fantastic put into the realities of um, you know 18th century France that um, gives us a, some kind of a not really a fairy tale but more like a fantasy way of how uh, this little story of how uh, Jean-Baptiste Grenouille unwield and um, sort of was going a little bit more on the critique of the society, of the society's greed and society is looking at some of the outcasts and um, how easily the masses can be manipulated. We, we could come up with a lot of the problems that the book could have um, brought up. Uh, I personally feel like it was more of a, an interesting experiment um, or predicament that you sort of basing so much in your book around sense and uh, I feel like this experiment turned out to be quite a successful one uh, looking at it uh, in a retrospect. What I found uh, quite interesting is that the inspiration for the story of Grenouille also partially or loosely based on the story of Werewolf of Alaris who actually was a, one of the first or first documented Spanish serial killer who was killing women supposedly because he was suffering from lycanthropy and you know lycanthropy if you've ever played any fantasy games or read any fantasy books is uh, pretty much a condition that um, says the person can turn into a werewolf and uh, <laughs> This supposed werewolf um, killed many women before being caught and uh, at the trial when he was asked to turn into the werewolf he said that, oh, actually uh, this curse that I had of turning into wolf lasted for just 13 years and, you know, just a week, week before you guys started this trial it expired, so sorry, I cannot turn into the animal anymore. Um, so, yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> just the fact that it was documented in such a way it sounds like a bizarre anecdote that somebody really used it as their defense at the, at the serial killer trial and I understand like it was still 19th century end of 18th century where people were believing much more crazy things that um, we may have believed now but the fact that this guy used it as his defense uh that sounds really bizarre even for that period of time. But anyway, this has been the story of Jean-Baptiste Grenouille. I um, highly recommend to read this book to those who are, you know, like this period of time and, and enjoy reading the stories of the 18th century, particularly about France. It uh, gives some insight into the historical period of this, historical situations, and I think... Um, Stories sometimes getting this some kind of an uncanny feeling that um, makes you a little bit uncomfortable at times, but yet it's still gripping. And if you manage to machete your way out through the descriptions, you will actually 
get to enjoy um, this quite an interesting story. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, I hope you gonna have a very great day. Uh, let me know down in the comments uh, what do you think about the book if you read it, or what do you think about the video, of course, as well. Give a like, subscribe, and bye.